Hey guys, Physio Joy here. Welcome back to my space on the internet. So I asked you guys on Instagram stories what you would like to see because I have a day of making some content in between physio virtual sessions. Well, I was about to film some content for YouTube. Um, I just had KFC. <clears throat> and I can't stop eating it. Hot of me. Please let me know what sort of stuff you want to see. Um, I want to film some physio inclined things, so and you came back responding. A few of them actually were prehab for the knee. Before I go further, I would like to say, if you'd like a one-on-one -on -one virtual session with me, wherever you are in the world, all you need to do is look in the description or caption, depending on where you're watching this video, and you can see the link to my calendar. You can book directly into my calendar, anywhere you are in the world, I'll be able to have a look at you via video, diagnose you, it's a detailed assessment. Sometimes the assessments are 60 to 90 minutes long and we can basically give you exactly what you need for you because these videos are of course very general. So when it comes to knee strengthening, a lot of people would probably bring it down to strengthening the quads, which are the muscles in the front of your thigh, and strengthening the hamstrings, which are the muscles at the back of your thigh. But those are not the only muscle groups that we need to strengthen. So think about this for a second. Your knees are right in between your hips and your ankles. In order for your knees to function, your hips need to function, your ankles need to function. Or even think about your glutes, think about your calf muscles. And it's so important when it comes to strengthening your knee, whether it's for prehab or rehab, prehab being before an injury to prevent an injury, rehab being after an injury, rehabilitating post-injury. You want to make sure that you target all of those areas. You want to go from the hips all the way down to the ankles. These 10 exercises have a bit of everything in there for you. If you enjoy the exercises, please remember to give this video a thumbs up. Remember to like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it because we are growing this channel. And if you know anybody that will benefit from these exercises, remember to share the video. Without further ado, let's get into it. So the first exercise is called static quads. You are keeping your leg on the floor, straight leg position, and you're gonna bring your foot towards you and squeeze that knee into the floor. So just pretend you've got someone's hand behind you. You're trying to squash it down. You're gonna squeeze the quads, contract it for about 10 seconds and relax. If you have a lot of pain, obviously, you don't need to do it for 10 seconds. You can just do it for three, four, five seconds, however much um, you can, and relax and repeat the entire process 10 times. You can do the same for all of the exercises. Hold for however long you can and then repeat 10 times. Second exercise, this is very similar to static quads, but we call it inner range quads. As you can see, because I have a foam roller underneath me, we have now changed the angle of the leg. So as opposed to a straight leg, it's now in a slight bend. And essentially we're gonna do the same thing. So you're gonna push the foam roller into the floor. You can have a cushion, a towel, whatever you want. You can push it into the floor and then bring your foot towards you. You hold for about 10 seconds and relax, good. Push into the floor, hold for 10, and relax. Obviously that's not 10, I'm just showing you the exercise. Now these exercises, although they seem simple, you are really strengthening the quads because you are isolating the quads whose job is to essentially straighten the knee, extend the knee. You're really isolating the quads. Everything else in your body is just staying static and only the quads are working. So whether you're prehabbing or rehabbing, it's really important to get on the floor and do these sorts of exercises where you don't even need weight, you're just activating those muscles. Okay, so exercise number three is being in the same position. You can do this on the bed as well. All of these you can do on the bed. So if you can't get on the floor uh, because you're a bit older, that's totally fine. What you wanna do is squeeze those thigh muscles again, push your knee down into the floor, and then I want you to bring your entire leg up and then back down. And when you come down, try not to just flop the leg down. I want you to really control the descent, okay? So you're going up, Keep that leg straight. Try not to bend your knee as you're going up. So I want you to keep that leg straight completely and come down. And you might even find that with this, your leg is shaking a little bit. That's totally fine. Again, just remember you're working in isolation. So even if you're a bodybuilder, this is quite a good exercise to do. Isolating the quads and getting them to really work. Of course, you're flexing your hip as well. So there's a little bit of hip flexor action, but mostly you're gonna feel it in your quads, in the muscles in front of your thighs. Again, you just wanna hold for 10 seconds, however long you can, and then slowly let it down. 
Number four is knee extension using your band. So you're specifically working the quads for this one. You can do it without the band actually. So this would be the simple option. You're going up, squeezing the knee muscles. So these muscles are the front of your thigh. You're pushing that knee down and you're straightening the knee bringing your foot towards you, really holding for about 10 seconds or so. If I do this from the side, you see exactly what I mean. So I'm gonna stay here and you're still keeping the knee where it is, bringing your toes towards you, pushing the knee down, squeezing your thigh muscles, and then relaxing. If you wanted to do this with a band, this is what you would do. You will twist the band so that the band doesn't go up and down. Wearing socks can actually help as well. Um, the foot that you're working obviously goes up and down, so I just hook that around my ankle and the foot that I'm not working, or the leg that I'm not working, stands on the band essentially. So basically we're gonna go up, squeeze for 10 seconds and relax, okay? So I'm gonna do that from the side. Squeeze, one, two, three, up to 10. Not that quick, by the way. <laughs> and up and down. And every time you're pushing that knee into the chair or towards the floor, and you're bringing the, um, the foot up as well. So number five is a sit to stand, which is the easy option for a squat. So for this one, if you are a newbie or if you're older, I want you to have your legs as wide as possible because when you stand up, that gives you a very steady base of support. So you can use the arms of the chair to push up and then use your legs as much as you can. When you stand though, I want you to stand into extension. I want you to stand tall, shoulders back, and then put your hands back to help you sit down again. Remember your hands are just supporting and your legs are meant to be doing the bulk of the work. Lean forwards, stand up. And for even more advanced people, you can just do a normal squat where you don't need a chair at all. Okay, so exercise number six is a hamstring exercise. You can do this with a band, a small band, or even a long band, or you could do it on its own. So what I want you to do is, if I turn to the side, you'll be able to see it a lot better. Hold on to something if you have problems with standing, but basically keep your knees together. So I don't want you to bring that knee that you're exercising up because that becomes a hip flexor exercise. I want you to keep your knees together. I want you to stand up as tall as you possibly can. You're working the hamstrings, which are basically the muscles behind your thigh. So you're just gonna take your heel up, at this point, you could actually hold. You could hold for two seconds, three seconds, 10 seconds, and bring it down. Even without a band, you're going to feel those muscles working. If you wanted to add a band, the easiest way to do it is take a band like this. You want to twist it, so you hook it on one end, one foot, and then hook it on the other foot, which then means that when you're going backwards, it's a lot easier. So I tend to put that one behind um, my heel, and then standing up tall, I'm just gonna go up, pull the band as I go along, and then down again. I hope that makes sense. So you go up, pull the band, and down again. If you need to hold on to something, make sure you do, that's fine. But as long as that knee is not coming upwards, that's a completely different exercise. So number seven is a single leg deadlift. For this one, I've got a cushion. It has no weight to it whatsoever, but it just helps guide the exercise. You can also use a TheraBand for this, or you can use a kettlebell if you're a little bit more advanced. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on the right side. I'm gonna hold the cushion in my right hand whilst my right leg goes backwards. And the little trick with this is keep the knee slightly bent on the leg that is standing, and I want your body to go forwards as your leg goes backwards. So that you eventually end up in a tabletop position. So I'm gonna face this way, go down, bring my body down as my leg is going up, slight bend in my left, hold it there, and then slowly back up again. And squeeze my glutes as I come up, okay? So we're gonna go down. Lovely, nice straight back. If you can't go this far, it's totally fine. You can actually just go a little bit towards the floor and back up. Just make sure that your leg goes up at the same pace as your body goes down because if your body is going down and your leg is staying down, then you're putting a lot of stress on your back and you can eventually end up with back pain when you're doing deadlifts, even if you're not using a weight. Okay, so just to demonstrate that exercise again, you're going downwards, good and back up. And you're really gonna feel it in the, in the hamstrings of the standing leg. Variation number two, if you wanted to use a TheraBand, what you can do is stand on the TheraBand 
and then pull with the opposite hand. So actually, as you go down and your hamstrings are working, the TheraBand is shortening, not lengthening, shortening. You basically do exactly the same, go down, and then as you come up, you pull, squeeze. When you do this exercise, you might find that you are shakier on one side compared to the other. Totally fine. It just means that you need to work a little bit more on your balance to make things even harder, other than using a kettlebell, stand on a cushion. So the next exercise is a glutes exercise, okay? You're really gonna feel it in the glutes, in the leg on top. So you wanna go sideways. Again, you can do this on the bed, you can do it on the floor. Ideally, you wanna keep the ankles together and then your knees separate. The trick though is I don't want you to rotate your entire body backwards. I want you to try and just stop just before your body tries to go backwards. So you take that knee up, hold, and then back down again. You can actually do this laying down completely on your side. Sometimes I do this exercise using a band. Obviously, as you get a bit more advanced, same thing, you're basically staying on your side, ankles together, and you're gonna go up, hold. You're gonna feel it, like I say, in your glutes, in the top leg, and up. So this is basically externally rotating the ball in the socket, in the hips. I can feel it burning already in my glutes. Exercise number nine is ankle pump. So we're gonna be working the calf muscles. This exercise, you also wanna be holding onto something if you need to, if your balance is a bit off, and you're just gonna stand onto your tiptoes and down again. There we go. Up onto your tiptoes and down again. Up to your toes and down. If you're a little bit more advanced, you can actually stand on one leg. So you can stand on one and then down, go up onto one and then down. And then of course, as you get better, you don't need to hold on to anything. To make things harder, you can actually stand on a cushion. There's so many things you can do just to make it harder. So I'm down here for the final exercise because it's a bridge. I've got the band with me now because I wanna show you what it looks like with a band. You don't obviously have to do it with a band. Um, you can do it without, you can do it on the bed, same thing. In this position, you wanna just relax as much as you can. Um, the idea though is that you are pushing into the band, so already you're activating your glutes. So you want to be pushing into the band, getting those glutes ready. But if you've got any gap underneath, so in the small of your back, I want you to try and flatten that gap. So really activate your core, tuck your pelvis under, and then you're just getting ready for the exercise. And as you go up, you're pushing through your heels pushing all the way up and then you squeeze your glutes when you're up there and you're still holding your core. So not holding your breath, you're actually just engaging your core and then slowly, slowly come down again. People say things like they want you to kind of think about peeling your back gently one vertebra at a time off the floor. Good. And remember you're still pushing into the band uh, and then slowly come down again. Obviously you don't need a band like I say, the band is just an option. There is another variation where you can have your legs on something and you can bridge upwards. I'm not gonna do that because this is my wardrobe. <laughs> But you can basically have your legs on a chair, you can have your legs on a ball, that's obviously harder. You can also do a single leg bridge um, and just vary it in such a way that, you know, it works for you. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. Follow me on Instagram at PhysioJoy or at the London Physio. I have two Instagrams. And if you would like to see me do any other kind of video, please leave me comments down below. Or if you just want to add to the exercises, whatever the case might be, leave me comments down below. And finally, remember that I have virtual sessions going on. Book a virtual session one-on-one. -on -one. Regardless of where you are in the world, we can diagnose you, we can assess you, we can give you exact exercises for you and the exact advice that you need. So um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.